Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hatha Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. Make sure you have a couple of yoga blocks or pillows or a blanket or towel you could roll up. We're going to begin in a opening restorative pose. Um, you may want to have a strap for today's for more options in other postures. So if you only have a blanket, you can roll it up, make it into a cylindrical shaped pillow, lie it across your mat towards the back, lie down so that the area right under your shoulder blades lands onto that pillow to feel a lift of your chest as you roll your shoulders back and down. If you have two yoga blocks, either create an equal sign out of them so they're both on the medium height crossing your mat, or a milder version, have the block that's furthest from you, the tallest height. And then with the pelvis remaining on the ground, again, place the same area right under the shoulder blades onto the closer block, the medium height block, and then the back of your skull on the further block. So situate yourself, shift around as you need. Take a moment to balance left and right sides of your body so the two shoulders are equally lengthening away from your ears, softening downward. And then it may help to rotate your upper arm bones externally by flipping your palms to face up, letting your arms just land slightly away from your thighs. And now with your legs, a few options, you can simply extend your legs straight forward like Shavasana. If you're going for opening the hips to start, come into Supta, Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees bent apart. Or if you're needing some release or space across your sacrum, your lower back, you could do the opposite with your legs. And that's stepping the feet apart, wider than hips distance, then dropping your knees together so that they touch. If you feel comfortable to do so, maybe close your eyes. You start to turn your attention inward, pratyahara, withdrawing from external stimuli, paying more attention to going on from the inside out. <sighs> so in the past few days, we've been exploring the last niyama or duty to self, spiritual practice that make up the second limb of yoga. And that last niyama in Sanskrit is called Ishvara Pranidhana, often translated as devotional surrender or offering up of one's actions to divine will or to whatever your understanding of God is. So I want to quote some more from Shiva Ray's article in Yoga Journal. She says, here are some arenas in which I've found Ishvara Pranidhana to be especially useful. At the beginning of any action, as a way of shifting your perspective when faced with difficulty, and as a method for experiencing fully the simple acts of life. The yoga mat or meditation cushion is a wonderful safe space, a closed course, on which you can test drive Ishvara Pranidhana. As with any action in the world, the way you begin your practice can make a huge difference in how your yoga flows. Inner listening, setting your intentions, chanting, and visualization are all formal ways of initiating Ishvara Pranidhana. Surya Namaskar, and that's the sun salutations, can also be a method of Ishvara Pranidhana. In its origins, it was a moving prayer in which every breath offered the yogi's energy back to the sun. As you practice asana, these physical postures, you can start treating challenging yoga poses as microcosms of life's difficulties, and thus great opportunities to practice the art of offering. In my own practice, she says, I am becoming more and more able to recognize tension as a signal. Holding and gripping are signs that my connection with Ishvara Pranidhana is lessening. As I offer my attention back to the source, 
emptying and surrendering again, I very often experience a boost of strength or a deepening of my breath and flexibility. Even more importantly, I experience a shift from my small crowded inner world to a bigger picture of being alive. Just as the Buddhist commitment to bringing awareness to every action is called mindfulness, Ishvara Pranidhana could be called heartfulness. The practice that awakens our constant devotion to the source of life and keeps our hearts open to the divine in every moment, no matter what arises. I invite you to take a deeper inhalation, filling your heart space, encouraging the beating of your collarbones, making any sound, open your mouth, draw your breath out. Feel your belly settle in closer to your spine. And then again, even slower inhalation, drinking up, full expansion in the chest. Feel a slight lift of your sternum. Keep that slight lift. And then again, any sound, let it make a vibration in your body as you exhale. And then from where you are, three chants of Om. Again, take a deep breath, filling up your abdomen and your chest, your back body, the very top for one chant of Om first. Second round, take a deep breath in. Last round of Om, deep breath in. If your thighs are splayed open here, please bring your palms to the outsides of them so that you can start to lift your knees up. Set your two feet on the ground and gently roll over to one side, moving off of your props, pressing away, gradually lift seat. And if you have a block, please set them on both sides of the top of your mat. I'd like to move into a pranayama or breathing practice is known for helping to, it's actually called skull shining breath, or in Sanskrit, kapalabhati, sometimes also called breath of fire. Strokes the inner fire, warm, engages core muscles, but gets us out of our mind, into our bodies, into our breaths. So it's done with the mouth closed. We focus on the movement of the belly. We expand the belly, and we exhale to contract the belly in. And it's sort of a bouncing uh, motion as the belly contracts like this. It kind of feels like you're blowing your nose quickly. So they're quick breaths, or as you can, maintain a steady rhythm. If it helps, you can place your hand in your belly as you practice breath of fire. Otherwise, there's also a kriya drawn from yoga that is called ego eradicator pose kind of strong name and we extend the arms out straight so they're about um, 60 degree angles stick your thumbs up towards the sky curl in the rest of your fingers and feel an active stretch between your thumb and index fingers and then with this we practice breath of fire focusing on relaxing the neck and shoulders so whatever way to practice palabati pranayama I'm gonna set the time for one minute Let's prepare and go.
So more important than going really fast is to keep a steady rhythm. And once you've found a steadiness, see if you might be able to quicken the pace. Feel that your face is relaxed. You might be closing your eyes. We're down to 20 more seconds. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath at the top. Think of lifting your pelvic floor, drawing your navel inward and upward. And as you keep your eyes closed, exhale through the mouth and bring your thumbs together to touch overhead if your arms are raised. And then bring your palms face down to land on your lap. Pause a moment to just observe how you feel here. And allow a deeper inhalation, closing your lips if you can. Softly narrow the back of your throat as you exhale just as deeply. Listen for a subtle whispering sound as you breathe equally in and out through your nostrils. Now beginning another warming breath, Ujjayi Pranayama, victorious breathing. And continuing on with that breathing style. Take at your legs, and if you're sitting cross-legged, I invite you to switch the cross of the leg that's forward or on top. Root down to your left and right sitting bones. And as you inhale, I'm gonna mirror you here. Backstroke your left hand behind your pelvis onto the floor. Raise your right arm up. Then as you exhale, rotate your chest to face your left wall. Lower your right hand onto your lap or press the back of it against your outer left thigh. And let's stay here another four breaths. <clears throat> Each inhalation firming downward to the surface below your body to lift upward, feeling length in your spine. And with each exhale, drawing your navel inward towards your back body, perhaps rotating your rib cage a little further into the twist. Notice that your shoulders are relaxed down. Your chest is broad. Your chin is parallel to the ground. Let's take another deep breath. And exhale to unwind, come to center. Inhale back, shoot your right hand to the floor behind your pelvis, raise your left arm. And as you exhale, begin to rotate your rib cage to face your right wall. Lowering your left hand either onto your lap or pressing the back of your hand against your outer right thigh. Continue breath by breath to ease deeper into your spinal twist. Feel the space you're maintaining at your throat and across your chest. Another breath in. Exhale to unwind. Let's crawl down to hands and knees, coming onto all fours. And as we set up for cat-cow, you may like to stretch your inner wrists and forearms by planting your palms face down and then spinning your fingertips to face the outer edges of your mat, maybe even the rear edge of your mat. Set your knees slightly behind your hips. And then let's begin by inhaling the heart forward then coiling your chest up as you look towards the sky. Exhaling, contract your belly, feel your tailbone tuck under your body as you drop your skull. Then again, inhale your heart forward, peeling your shoulder blades down your back. Exhaling, contracting your belly to dome your back. And take at least three more cycles on your own, just listening to your own pace of breath. Remember that this is your practice. 
and know that everything that I'm speaking here are merely suggestions for you to choose from in how you tailor your practice today to meet your needs, to meet yourself where you are physically, energetically, and to perhaps slide yourself into a state of balance on whatever spectrum of the scale you're feeling. When you're ready, let's meet in downward facing dog, allowing a few breaths to just arrive in it. Whether that means pedaling your feet out and shaking your head to relax your neck, or if that means to be still right away, arriving in your own way for a few breaths. Deep inhale, slow exhale. Deep inhale, bend your knees, look beyond your fingertips. Exhale, walk to the front of your mat to stand in a forward fold, having your feet hips width, parallel. Bend your knees a lot here, so much that your belly could rest on your thighs. And with your knees bent, just let your skull drop. Catch hold of opposite elbows with your hands and perhaps even begin to sway your spine side to side where you bend one knee even deeper and then the other knee. Maybe even softly shaking your head no and really just encouraging your neck to feel free, to feel relaxed. You might even nod your head yes and flutter your lips to relax your mouth, your jaw. Then switch hold of the opposite Elbow on top, see if you can pull a little more weight forward towards your toes, less weight on your heels. And then begin to firm your navel inward towards your back, even though you're still bending your knees, you're still relaxing your neck. And as you gently pull your elbow tips towards the earth, can you also lift your shoulder bones up in the opposite direction, inviting more space in your neck? Land your fingertips either on blocks in front of your feet or on the ground or your shins. And as you inhale, draw your chest through your upper arms, belly firms in, back is flat, shoulder blades glide back. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bow a little deeper, maintaining that flat back. Know that you can bend your knees any amount to do so. Again, inhale, lengthen forward. Feel the sides of your torso grow from your outer armpits to your outer hips. Firm the front muscles of your thighs. Exhale again, forward fold, Uttanasana. This time, reach your hands behind you to interlace your fingers or to grab a strap to hold between your hands, further opening the fronts of your shoulders. Belly firming in, knees bent, tilt your weight forward. And then again, inhale, rise halfway. Lengthen your sternum towards your front wall. Then exhale as you hinge, dropping your skull, keep your hands together and reach them forward away from your lower back. Now this time begin to straighten your right leg, keeping your left knee bent, lean your chest to the outside of your right calf, shoulders lifting away from your neck. Let's take one more breath. Bending both knees, bring your torso back to center if your hands are clasped, try switching to interlacing with thumb and index on top. This time, straighten your left leg, bending your right knee some more. Lean your torso to the outer left calf. Keep reaching your arms forward, lifting your shoulders up, and relaxing your neck. One more deep breath. Come back to your center with both knees bent. Drop your arms, drop your torso, drop your skull, but firm your navel inward, firm the front of your thighs. And as you breathe in, begin to roll your spine upright, slowly stacking one vertebra at a time, lifting your head last. Once you arrive at the top, shrug your shoulders and take a big exhale to release them back. Bring your palms to face forward, standing tall in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Feel the ground 
to the four corners of each foot as you spread your toes. Feel how that enlivens the muscles in your legs, your quadriceps as your tailbone descends. Feel the uplift of your chest as your shoulder blades draw down your back, lifting up to your crown, stand tall, stand connected. As you bring your palms together your heart, I invite you to pause a moment to perhaps make a dedication of the fruits of your practice here today. On your next inhale, sweep your arms overhead, palms meeting towards the sky above. Hinging from your hips with a flat back, exhale to fold. Press with your fingertips and inhale, lengthen halfway up. Place your hands alongside your heels and step your left knee to the ground in a low lunge. Inhaling, coil your chest up here. Look up. Exhale into half split, lifting your right toes, flex the foot and scissor your right hip back to straighten the right leg, bowing inside of it. Inhale, re-enter the kneeling lunge, bending the front knee, coil your chest up. With hands flat on the floor, step into plank pose. Let's pause for three breaths. Now you can decide if you wanna keep your legs straight or bring your knees to the ground. Gazing on the floor ahead of your hands, lengthen your neck. Feel the lift of your navel. Draw your shoulder blades down your back and wide apart. Moving into Chaturanga Dandasana with an exhale, glide your shoulders one foot forward of your wrists. Bend your elbows back to frame your side ribs. Then come all the way down. Pointing your toes on the earth, firm the tops of your feet into the ground. Inhale into a baby cobra, just peeling your chest lightly away from the floor and softening your shoulders down. Hug your elbows. Press up into your version of plank pose, drawing the navel in. Then lift your pelvis high, draw your weight back into downward facing dog. Now lifting from the in, inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Then rounding forward like cat pose, bend your left knee towards your chin and very gently step your left foot just inside of your left hand. Lower your right knee, kneeling lunge. Inhale, coil your chest up as you keep your fingertips down. Exhale, scissor left hip back, straightening the front leg as you flex the foot and fold, half split. Inhale again, kneeling lunge, coil your chest up. This time, exhale, step right foot forward, hips distance from the left to fold. From down through your feet, inhale, circle your arms towards the sky to rise. Watch your palms meet in salutation. Exhale, trace your thumbs down the midline of your body into mountain pose. Side two. Inhale, sweep your arms high, looking up. Exhale, bow with a long spine. Press with your fingertips, inhale, lengthen halfway up. Hands alongside your heels. Exhale, step right knee back to a kneeling lunge. Inhale, coil your chest up. Exhale, scissor left hip back into a half split, flexing your left toes off the ground. Inhale again, kneeling lunge, coil your chest up. Plant your hands flat, exhale, step into plank, and this time continue forward and down through chaturanga to the ground. Again, cobra, but perhaps you lift the chest a little bit higher, keep your elbows hugging close to your sides. Tuck your toes. With an exhale, press up through plank. Lift your tailbone back, down your dog. Lifting from the inseam of the leg. Inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, contract your belly, round knee towards chin. Softly land the right foot just inside of your right hand. Lower your back knee. Inhale, coil your chest up, kneeling lunge. Exhale, scissor right hip back. Flex the right toes up into half split as you bow. Inhale again, kneeling lunge, coil your chest up. Exhale, step, left foot forward, hips distance from the right, forward fold. From down through your feet, inhale, circle your arms to rise to stand. Exhale, trace your thumbs to your heart center. 
See that your feet are parallel hips distance. In fact, if you have a block, I invite you to take the skinniest width and hug it right in between your thighs so that we can really feel the action of firming into your midline, especially with your outer hips. Keeping your two hip bones facing forward, draw navel towards spine, soften front ribs towards your back body. Shift your weight towards your heels and bend your knees into chair, slowly raising your palms to face up. In front of you, then overhead. Press through all of your feet and then exhale, rise to stand. Arms releasing down by your side. So imagine your arms were like paintbrushes. Let your wrists feel fluid. Inhale again, chair pose. Sink back towards your heels. Maybe sit a little lower, arms forward and up. Exhale, rise to stand, arms releasing down by your side. Three more rounds. Inhale, chair, maybe sit a little lower. Glide your shin bones back, navel in. Exhale, rise to stand. Inhale, chair. Exhale, mountain pose. I believe this is our last round. Inhale, chair. And exhale, mountain pose. Wasn't that a nice way to get in a chair? Let's put the block down and now let's come into feet together so that your big toes touch, your heels are slightly apart. We're gonna move into a few rounds of Sun Salutation B, Surya Namaskar B. So let your knees come together as well as you hug your midline with your hips. Inhale, maybe graze the floor with your fingertips, sitting that low in chair, arms up. This time, one breath per movement. Exhale, shift forward to bow. Inhale, press with your hands to lengthen halfway up. Step into plank or float into Chaturanga Dandasana. Continue into cobra or upward facing dog as you breathe in. Legs strong here. Hollow your belly as you lift your hips into downward dog. Lift from the inseam, inhale, raise your right leg. Round forward, exhale, step the foot just inside of right hand, spin the back heel down, keep your hips facing forward, inhale, rise into warrior one. Exhale, lower through plank, forward and down through Chaturanga Dandasana, your choice of cobra or upward dog. Exhale to downward dog, side two. Lift from the inseam, inhale, raise left leg back. Exhale, round forward, step the foot inside of left hand, spin right heel down. Facing forward, inhale, rise into Virabhadrasana one. Exhale, flow down into your vinyasa. All the way through at your pace of breath. As you pause in stillness in downward facing dog, three to five breaths. What are you offering the fruits of your actions? Two or four. This is where we get to take the practice benefits beyond ourselves and share it through our intention. Let's bend the knees, look past your hands. On empty breath, walk or float, feet together at the top. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. With knees together, inhale, sit low in chair, Utkatasana. Exhale, rise into mountain pose. Another flow, inhale, chair. Same sequence. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Your choice of stepping or floating into Chaturanga. Continue through your vinyasa. Then back to downward dog at your pace. When you're ready, inhale, lift right leg. Exhale the foot forward, back heel down. Inhale, rise into warrior one. Exhale, lower to flow. Insert your version of your vinyasa. Now at your own pace, continue into side two. We'll meet together in downward facing dog. I am not the things my family did. I am not the voices in my head. I am not the pieces of the brokenness inside.
three to five breaths in Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now, before we close this sun salutation V sequence, I'm going to plug something in. So inhale, please come forward into plank pose. Now, imagine you're hugging that block again between your thighs. Firm your outer hips towards your midline. Draw your navel in and up towards your heart, towards your spine, like a little zipper. And try to keep your two hips from wavering like a seesaw. Like you're balancing something delicate across your lower back. You don't want to spill as you lower onto forearm plank. So both elbows land right under your wrists or under your shoulders. And then you draw your shoulder blades down your back, gazing slightly past your thumbs, firming your inner heels back. Bring your feet together to touch. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale, long and strong from crown, tailbone to heels. Exhale, two. One more deep breath. Exhale, gently land your knees in pelvis, sphinx pose. Cross your left forearm in front of your chest. Bend your right knee. Back stroke your right arm. Catch hold of the big toe side of your right ankle or foot. With knees no wider than hips distance. Bring your right heel slightly to the outside of your right hip, lengthening your right quadricep. Feel your chest completely face forward as you melt your shoulders down. Three more breaths. Softening your eyebrows, relaxing your forehead. Exhale, release your right leg straight. Bring your right forearm to the floor, crossing it in front of your chest. Bend your left knee and backstroke your left arm, catching the big toe side of left ankle or foot. Ground your two frontal hip bones. Bring your left heel slightly to the outside of your left hip. Turning your heart forward, melting your shoulders down. Three more breaths. Nice. Release your left leg straight. Lower your forehead to the earth and scoot your ankles as close together as you can. Now, as you bring your hands behind you to either clasp or to hold a strap between, feel your tailbone reaching back towards your inner heels, helping to lengthen your lower back. Simultaneously, spiral your inner thighs, the inseam of your legs towards the sky broadening your lower back. Then energize your legs as you press your heels back, lifting your legs off the floor, coil your chest up, gently lifting your head, and stretch the knuckles of your hands towards your heels in bound locust pose. Breathe in, expand your chest forward, exhale slightly down so there's no strain in your neck. Now continue for about five more breaths, your count with the option of bending your two knees and catching hold of both outer feet into bow pose, kicking the legs towards straight as you pull your feet towards your glutes. Keep your knees no wider than hips distance. Can you feel energization or energy filling up your heart space here as you open it physically, that region? And then when you're ready to release, slide into child's pose. Bring your feet together, bend your knees together apart, and extend your arms actively forward, placing your two elbows on the ground, your shoulders distance apart. Raise your forearms, turn your palms to face each other as you bow your head on the floor. Then press your fingertips into each other, almost like prayer position. Trace your thumbs back towards your neck, towards your shoulder blades and spiral your triceps or outer upper arms towards the ground. Feel the broadening across your shoulders as you send them back away from your neck. 
feel your pelvis draw back towards your feet. Now let's take three more deep breaths. Slowly, please make your way back to downward facing dog. Now let's finish this Surya Namaskar B. Bend your knees, look ahead of your hands. On empty breath, lightly land your feet at the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold with your feet touching, your knees touching. Prepare to twist in chair pose to sit back towards your heels. Join your hands together at your heart. Inhale, lengthen your spine, maybe sit a little lower. Keep your knees in one line, hug your hips towards the midline, and exhale, begin to twist to your right, turning your rib cage. And as you breathe in, pause, maybe sink the hips a little lower, but lengthen through the crown of your head. Exhale, maybe twisting a little more, with the option of hooking your left elbow outside of your right thigh, whether you keep your hands in prayer towards your sternum, or open your arms, maybe landing left fingertips just outside of right foot. Let's take three more deep breaths. Think of drawing your left sitting bone down and back towards the rear edge of your mat. As you sit a little lower, unravel your arms through center. Inhale back to Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, rise all the way up to mountain pose, setting left palm at your chest center, right palm at your abdomen. Imagine breathing in from the soles of your feet, taking an energy from the earth, mother earth, filling up your body to the crown. Visualize your breath out, releasing down your body, back out through the soles of your feet like a purification, giving it back to the earth. One more time, inhale from the soles of the feet all the way up to your body, filling up to your crown. Entire body illuminated with breath. And exhale, wash it out. Down, down into the earth. With feet touching, inhale back to chair, hugging your midline with knees, with hips, join your hands at your heart. And as you exhale, begin to rotate your chest to the left, Inhale, maybe sit a little lower as you lengthen your spine. Exhale, twisting some more, perhaps hooking right elbow outside of left thigh. Choose the variation you might have explored on the first side with your arms. Take notice of the quality of your breath here. And in times that we may want to jump out of a situation like a rigorous pose, how do you recenter yourself? Perhaps that suggestion by Shiva Ray, offering it up. Last breath. Sit a little lower. Inhale through center, chair pose. This time join your hands at your, your left foot towards the rear of your mat, entering warrior one. Now we've been here through the flow be here in the stillness. Have your feet about hips. Bend your right knee just on top of the heel and draw your right thigh bone back into your hip socket. Now as you firm your left outer heel into the earth and straighten the leg, feel spiraling of your inner left thigh, your rear wall. Notice how that allows you to square your hips. Feel the bowl shape as your pelvis can lift your frontal hip bones just enough so that you can level out your pelvis like a bowl sitting upright on a table rather than spilling forward. Extending your arms up. Feel length through your side waist, through your neck. Let your shoulders release down. Perhaps bringing thumbs together to touch, pinky fingers together to touch. 
in that lotus mudra we practiced in meditation this week. Heels of the palms touching. You might imagine a warm light coming from above. Those of you in the lotus mudra channeling that light down through the crown of your head, down to your center line, a sense of nourishment, a sense of stability, strength, and ease. Coming into Degasana, keep your legs in warrior one, draw navel towards spine, and now you can keep your arms overhead. This will make it more rigorous if you're looking for that, or you can bring your arms down by your sides, palms facing forward. You're gonna hinge from the hips, keep the length of your spine like a flat back, and just hover your belly off of your right thigh. Continue to scissor your right hip back, spiral the inseam of your left thigh towards your rear wall and ceiling. Entering Virabhadrasana three, warrior three. Shifting your weight forward entirely onto your right foot, you have the option of lowering your hands on the floor blocks, or joining them in prayer, or reaching your arms overhead. Now feel again, the inseam of your left thigh now spirals towards the sky, turning the left hip bone to face the ground. Draw your right outer hip back towards your rear wall. Feel the lift of your navel with a feeling of a flat back. Last three breaths in Virabhadrasana three. Set your hands on the floor or on blocks a foot in front of your right toes and keep your inner left thigh lifting as you inhale to lift your chest. Look forward. Exhale, bow in towards your right shin, standing split. You're just here for a couple more breaths. If you like, you can walk your hands closer to your right foot. You could wrap right arm or both arms around right calf. Try to keep your hips leveling out. And gently land your left foot hips width from your right foot, top of your mat, forward fold. Bend your knees, inhale into chair pose with the feet apart, thighs apart. Join your hands at your heart and exhale foot towards the rear of your mat, entering side two in warrior one. Now as you ground your outer right heel, keeping your right leg straight, Spin the inseam of your right thigh towards your rear wall. Bend your front knee right over the ankle, plugging the thigh bone into the hip socket. Slightly lift your frontal hip bones, lengthening both up and down your spine and crown. Arms lifted, take a deep breath. Again, option to bring that mudra into the energetic hold of this posture. Pinky fingers together, thumbs together, heels of the palms together, the hands splay like a lotus blossoming. Perhaps using visualization as well. A warm light, a nurturing energy pouring into your palms from above, from whatever you understand a source pouring that life energy to revitalize down the center line of your body two more breaths degasana zipper navel towards spine and heart keep your hips facing forward now you can keep your arms overhead. Know that that will be more rigorous if you want that. Otherwise, bring your arms down by your sides with palms facing forward. Keeping the sense of a flat back, hinge from your hips, bowing to hover your belly off of your left thigh. Keep scissoring your left hip back. Keep reaching your right hip forward. Feel the space at your throat as you look slightly ahead on the floor. As you're ready, shift forward into warrior three, leaning entirely on your left foot, choosing however you want to vary your arms, 
Now think of spiraling the inseam of your right thigh towards the sky as you flex your right foot. Drawing your left outer hip back as you lift your navel. Feel into about three more breaths here in warrior three. Set your hands down on blocks or the floor, standing splits. Keep your right leg lifted, and inhale, lift your chest, lengthen forward. And as you exhale to fold, keep lifting from the inseam of your right leg, bowing towards left shin. You might wrap your left calf with left hand or both. Then set your right foot hips distance from your left foot. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Exhale to fold. Please find your strap while you're down here. <laughs> and then take hold of it as you inhale, hands to the hips. Lead with your chest to rise up to stand. All right, one more play with balance standing in. Not to adjust in a dancer pose. Bring the feet together to touch. Remember that sense of hugging your midline from your outer hips. You want to keep that action as well as pulling the inseam of your thighs slightly towards the wall behind you to maintain the squaring of your hips, which means both frontal hip bones evenly facing forward. We've been doing a little leading pose. So you may want to start with a strap and decide to not use it. If so, making a loop with a strap or stepping the ball of your foot into the center. Hi. No problem. Thanks for coming. <laughs> You're going to hold the strap in your hand so the ball of your right foot is in the strap. And then right palm face up, right elbow bent towards right waist, left hand on left hip. Now, as you bend your right knee to hug the left knee, you want to feel a little tension, like a little tug of war or tug of peace between right foot and right hand, sliding right hand closer to the right foot. Now, here's where you might decide you don't need the step if you're able to catch hold of your right ankle or foot. I prefer the inner side, that's the big toe side, like we did lying on our bellies. But whatever you can reach. Think of your tailbone like an anchor, seeking the floor right inside of your left heel. That helps you to contain your belly, to contain your center. Keep it alive and supportive. And then as you begin to kick your right leg back as though it's entering warrior three, which we just did, feel the counter force of pulling your right leg towards your glutes. Those two work together to maintain balance as you lift your left arm. Maybe Gyana Mudra where you bring thumb and index to touch, lifting your chest into a heart opener, a back bend. Notice your breath here. You might imagine breathing from your heart center, the area of your sternum, and then from there radiating the vitality of your breath throughout your body, perhaps back down into the earth. If you're still in it, let's take one more deep inhale and not to rajasana, dancer pose. Before you come out, keep your weight on your left foot, rise to stand, catch hold of your right thigh or bent knee. In front of you, flex your right foot. Bring your right thumb to the crease of your right hip, tack it down, and then begin to twist to the right, reaching right arm towards your back wall. Maybe you walk your left hand to your outer right foot. Press into the earth, lift down. Spiral your chest as you breathe out. If you're looking behind you, start to look forward. Bend your right knee again, take a breath. And then exhale, release your right foot. Now you may want to give your left foot a little shake or circling at the ankle if it needs it before we switch sides. And if you use your strap, go ahead and grab it. Step the ball of your left foot into the loop or into the center of the strap. If you're not going to use the strap, 
Bring your right hand to your right hip. As you bend your left knee to hug your right knee, catch hold of the inside of your left ankle or foot, the big toe side. Otherwise, you're walking your hand down the strap as close as you can to your left foot. Feel your tailbone like a heavy anchor towards your inner right heel. Frontal hip bones lift. Begin to kick left leg back towards warrior three. Counter force, pull the left foot towards you. Raising right arm, two hip bones facing forward. Breathe a sense of buoyancy into your heart center. Notice if there's a sense of struggle here. If so, can you surrender that and find a balance where there's a feeling of flow, a feeling of ease, even though you might be sweating and engaging muscles. Let's take two more breaths in dancer pose or Natarajasana. Now keep your weight on your right foot, bend your left knee in front of you, flexing the foot, catch hold of your left thigh or your knee, balance your two hips, use your left thumb to hook your left hip crease down, stand a little taller, as you exhale, twist to your left, reach your left arm back. Option to walk your right hand down to your outer left foot and extend your left leg forward as you continue twisting. As you root into the earth, can you feel the rise of energy supporting length and stability to your midline? If you're looking behind you, start to look forward again. Rebend your left knee, take a breath, and let it go. Please place the wide width of your mat. Come into a wide-legged forward fold. So if you want to bring your blocks in front of you, you could do that too. Step your feet apart, wider than hips distance, but not too wide. Parallel your feet, bring your hands to your hips. Then inhale, lift your chest, look up. Exhale, hinge forward, lower your fingertips. Then inhale, lengthen halfway, chest forward. Weight shifts a little heavier towards the toes. Lifting the kneecaps without locking them, fold in. So give yourself five to 10 breaths in whatever version of an inversion here you'd like to vary this. There's an option to move into tripod headstand. If that's within the scope of your practice, there's an option to add a spinal twist. Lifting your spine halfway up, reaching one arm towards the sky and turning your chest. A few breaths on each side. There's also an option to further open your chest by clasping your hands behind your back. And as you're ready, lifting your spine halfway, bring your hands in front of you, pause for a few breaths. Shoulders moving away from your neck. Heel toe your feet a little closer together, maybe slightly wider than hip distance. And then keep your head low as you bend your knees to the ground. Turn to face whatever edge of your mat you need to for child's pose. Now you might opt to do something different with your arms in my last child's pose, and that might be reaching your arms back down alongside your shins. There's an option to come into rabbit pose. Those of you needing a little more stretch into the back body. If rabbit pose, bring all four fingers except the thumb to the inner sides of your heels. Thumbs are on the outer sides of your heels. That's the pinky toe side. So you're holding your heels sort of like baseballs. Then you begin to pull your heels towards you as you lift your pelvis as high as you can, perhaps to stack above your knees, 
so that you roll onto the crown of your head, weighing little weight on your head because you're using the action of pulling your heels with your hands to remove weight from your skull. There's the counter fours of hips rising and hands pulling heels. Will that stretch across the lower back, mid back? Whether you're in child's pose or rabbit pose, please take two more slow breaths. Plant your hands alongside your knees. Inhale, roll your spine upright slowly. Ah, let's bring the legs out in front of you for Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. So option to bring your strap around the balls of your feet here. Otherwise, you could lift your arms straight up, hold on to two imaginary straps from the sky, flex your feet, press the big toe mounds forward, from down to your sitting bones, lift your entire rib cage, but relax your shoulders down. Take a deep breath. And with a feeling of a flat back, begin to hinge forward from your hips, each exhale incrementally. Now, if you're holding those imaginary straps, begin to hold your legs instead, the backs of your calves, your outer ankles, perhaps clasping your big toes with your peace fingers. Can you maintain a feeling of buoyancy at your heart center so that your chin is not closing your throat? Your shoulders are releasing space into your neck. Last three breaths. Leading from your chest, inhale to slowly rise up. Point your toes, extend your arms forward, palms face up and begin to gently lower one vertebra at a time to the floor. And then once there, take your option of either moving into a cooling inversion like supported shoulder stand, a block under the sacrum, like straight up, or regular shoulder stand if you usually practice that. Otherwise, I'm gonna bring into uh, bring you into a hip opener, supine single pigeon, or thread the needle. We didn't really do many of those external rotations of the thighs at all, actually. So if you're doing the hip opener, cross your right ankle over your left thigh, figure four shape flex your right foot. Now you could stay here. You could press your right palm gently against your inner right thigh to open it with your shoulders and pelvis on the floor. Or you could thread your right hand between your thighs and catch your left thigh or shin with two hands, gradually bringing it towards your chest. At the same time, you could splay your right thigh open using your right forearm or elbow. Another option is if your right calf is less than a foot close to your chest, you could cradle your right foot, your right knee into the crooks of your elbows like a baby. And then straighten your left leg forward to rest on the ground. Make sure that you're flexing your right foot in any of these versions to help stabilize your right knee. If you're in an inversion of your choice, feel free to stay about a minute longer. If you're in a hip opener, one of these, give yourself just two or three more breaths before we switch. Switching sides for the hip opener, bend your two knees, set your two feet on the floor, then turn out your left leg and flex your left foot, crossing the ankle over your right thigh. You could press your left palm against your inner left thigh, staying right here. You could thread your left arm between your thighs, catching hold of right thigh or shin with two hands and bring your right leg closer to your chest while nudging your left thigh open. Or if your left calf is less than a foot close to your chest, 
you could come into supine single pigeon, cradling your left foot and knee within the crooks of your elbows, while straightening your right leg forward onto the floor. Feel the flow of your breathing. If you are in some kind of inversion, please begin to lower your body so that you can either come into happy baby, hug your knees in, a gentle supine twist, whatever last movement or gentle pose before we all arrive in stillness in corpse pose. Those of you in the hip opener, again, choose any gentle movement or pose like drawing your knees in, giving yourself a tight squeeze, a big Embrace. And then look around you and see if there are any props that you'd like to use for a comfortable setup for Shavasana. Put over your body, maybe an eye covering or two eyes covering. <laughs> maybe a pillow under the backs of your knees. And know that even though we have a lovely group here practicing together tonight, that if you feel that you want to keep this introspection going after Shavasana, you have the right to just remain in Shavasana or to say goodbye silently. Closing your eyes, dropping into that peace within. For those of you that need more time in Shavasana, it's been just a brief one so far. Feel free to stay. Join me sitting up for our last five minutes of meditation. Let your body gently rise. Finding a comfortable seat. So we've learned a few mudras recently, and if you find one that calls you right now, whether it's the Lotus Mudra, maybe at the heart center or the Bliss Body, Ananda Maya Kosha Mudra, the fingers together except the pinky fingers resting on your lap, or Gyana Mudra, often used thumb and index finger to touch. I'm going to set the timer now for five minutes.
For those of you that would like to close the practice together, feel free to stay where you are if you're not ready to. But if so, perhaps bringing your palms to meet at your heart center or at the center of your forehead, a gesture of reverence, of gratitude, of honoring. Perhaps come back to that moment in our physical practice today in which you may have dedicated the efforts or the fruits of your efforts here for someone or something. So that as we end with a chant of Om, it represents a sending out and sharing the benefits of your practice. Let's take a deep breath. Oh.